You are listening to the one and only Net Support Radio. Mark Anderson here, and I'm here with Al Kingley at Net Support Group headquarters here in Peterborough. So, uh, just talk to us a little bit, Raoul, about what it is that we're doing here. Good to see you, Mark. First and foremost, yeah, and, thank um, you. and thanks for the, thanks for the intro. Uh, I guess the broader part we, we we talk about are the different strands of technology that that we offer for the educational sector, and, and much of that, of course, is reactive to what's happening in the marketplace. But it, it you know it kind of falls into a number of different strands, and I suppose the starting point really at Net Support is about creating tools that help um, reduce the operational cost of running a school from an IT perspective. And, and that's really the, the starting point, I guess, and, and the building blocks of our, um, of our core product, NetSupport DNA. Um, and I suppose if we think about a school and the, the IT estate, the, the starting point always tends to be um, the ability to discover what you've actually got across your IT estate, you know, let alone yeah. in one school, if you've got multiple schools. Often that can be a challenge. But then the second question, which I think always really comes full circle, is um, once you know what kit you've got in a school, how often is it used? How well is it deployed? And how much of an impact is it having? So being able to monitor the actual use of machines and potentially redeploy that last row from the IT suite that's never used up to the business studies team so the kids have got some extra technology for researching is always a useful strand. Um, and then the third part, with capital budgets for schools being squeezed all the time, is what kit's upgradable? What's its lifespan? You know, what, what what specification are all these PCs and devices that you've got, and will they be suitable for the next round of software and, and OS updates? Uh, and we mentioned software because probably after kit, the number one cost for schools from an IT perspective is buying all those software licenses to use both, you know, from a from a management perspective, but also from a curriculum point of view. And so part of that kind of discovery and a way of empowering. Uh, teams is to actually monitor and identify not only what software is deployed across the school, but also what software and applications are being used. So when those hefty renewal bills turn up at each school and you're looking at renewing all those licenses for product X, you've got the evidence to say actually we don't use that very often or we only use 30 of those 50 licenses so we can make some savings and use that money for some fresh technology or apps or bits and pieces that we want in the school. Um, so that's another big side of it. Um, and then there are simple things, you know, power management, making sure machines aren't left on overnight, mm -hmm. looking at the energy costs for school. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all small slices of the, of the bigger picture. And, and saving on your power management on your PCs isn't going to pay for another teacher. But, you know, if you can save a few hundred pounds here and you can save a few thousand pounds on licenses and you can upgrade rather than replace a few PCs, add them together and suddenly that technology that you want to actually add to the school estate is much more affordable for you. You've got some money saved as part of that process. And there are lots of things you can do as well. For example, going back to that thing around the licenses, you know, it could be that they are being used lots, but only by 30 students for a month period at a time, and then it rotates to someone else. Well, rather than buying 90 licenses for those three classes, let's say, just have those 30 licenses and rotate them around. Absolutely, spot and, on. And, and it's, it's, it's monitoring software and things that you can use to sort of track the usage of, of all these different things, which is what you provide, yeah. that can really, really help with those savings, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and it is that point of just being aware. So the information provided it empowers you know, IT staff and teachers to recognise that actually we don't need these extra licences. We could share this kit. It could be moved around at different times of the year. So you bring them all together, and if you have a picture of what you've got, you have a picture of how they're being used, you have a picture of what's installed on them, and you can make that more effective, then ultimately you bring down the cost. There's a bigger cost in every school, of course, which is staff, you know, mm -hmm. and, and most schools, that's 75% of their overall co co um, cost. So if I was to say, you know, the number one thing that affects, in a, in, you know, productivity to the business is, is staff not having reliable IT, having kit either unavailable for teachers or for students in the classroom that interrupts learning. So as part of that reducing operates, it's about having the tools to remotely manage and maintain those machines and be proactive, you know. 
alert when th there's a, a scenario that might prevent a machine being operational. We can all think of the easy stuff like, you know, let us know when the disk's filling up or the CPU's maxed out on the machine, but there are much more subtle nuances that can be detected and reported, even down to letting you know when software's being installed or not, so that you can make sure you're within your licensing limit, but you can also validate is that appropriate software that's being installed in the school. So it's, it's really having that broadest possible picture of the IT estate. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier about the, the, the cost on budgets of, of um, staff, and, and, and you obviously said again that uh, the, the cost of licenses and hardware is very expensive. Coming from education myself as a teacher, I know how important it is to make sure that teaching staff are being effective in what they're doing so that the, the, the learners get their results. But flipping that, you know, by the same token, you, you still want a return on that investment when it comes to thinking about the technology that you purchase as well, because it is so expensive. And so what you're talking about then is saying not, it's not just about getting that return on your investment from the staff, and, but also from the technology you've got as well. Absolutely, and, and it works two ways. You know, one is from a, the, the, you know, the, the first level, we're spending public money, whatever our status of a school is. You know, we're spending public money, um, and we're buying this technology. And so, rightly, SLT governors and, and you know leaders of departments want to ensure that that money is being effectively used and deployed. But it's also empowering because if you can evidence and show that kit is being used all the time during school, it's having an impact, teachers are benefiting in their efficiency or productivity or teaching practice as a result, then it's a much stronger argument to justify further investment in new technologies. You know, and we all want to be bold sometimes and take the leap and embrace something new that could add to the classroom experience. If you can back that up by showing the last lot really had an impact, then you're one step closer to that finish line. Yeah, I, I would say an informed decision you know, is, is far better than a decision <laughs> which isn't, you know? Absolutely, yeah, I'm with you on that, yeah. Net Support Radio. Nothing else comes close. So, moving on, thinking now, talking about classroom use, uh, how, how does Net Support support um, te teaching and learning in the classroom then? Well, obviously, I'm very mindful of the fact that I'm um, preaching partly to the converted, and this is very much your area of expertise, Mark. But, you know, fundamentally, um, Ed tech and technology in the classroom doesn't suddenly magic better teaching. It's a facilitator that allows great teachers to do great things if you provide the right technology um, that's there. So uh, as a business, we started off many, many years ago with um, the first um, classroom management product. And I use the word management in, in speech marks because what we were talking about was the ability to manage the devices in a very simplistic sense. So um, um, I always use the term lock, stop and block, but basically uh, blank the screens, lock the keyboards, kids eyes to the front, and in reverse the teacher could show their screen to the students or jump onto a screen and actually help on a one-to-one -one basis. A and for many years that's what classroom management software was about. It was about managing the IT and when kids could and couldn't use it. Um, so it worked alongside perhaps some of the behaviour management techniques that were required in the classroom. But time's moved on and of course you know young people also have to be empowered to use technology creatively themselves. So Net Support is, has evolved its classroom management, so that probably the largest strand um, is about supporting things like assessment in the classroom um, and recognising that kids have different ways of learning and different ways of responding. So, for example, we developed um, our Q&A mode, which is very much like a game show. It's all about um, building questioning and engaging with different learners. So perhaps rather than asking a question, we might do fastest to answer and we might do um, teams within the classroom. We might do simple things like randomly selecting students and if you have your um, less engaged learners at the back of the class and they know each time the teacher hits the button it could be them that's next in the game show to respond, it ensures there's a degree of engagement. It also sometimes motivates some of the learners that are more competitive shall we say. So lots of those types of things. There's also the element of trying to support collaboration. So as well as perhaps me asking you know, the, the class, you know, a good example, you know, what's the smallest planet in the solar system? And we do fast, fastest to answer. And perhaps you respond first and you say, I think it's Saturn. Um, rather than a simple yes, no, the software allows a teacher to bounce the question to the rest of the class and get a peer assessment or, or bounce to the second child. Do you agree? Is Mark right or is he wrong on what's happening? But it's capturing that all the time so that the teacher at the end of the day can evidence as part of their plenary perhaps that kids have picked up and have developed knowledge about something. Mm. And then alongside that, we've kind of said, well, there's different learning styles. We've talked, you know, and it's something I've heard you talk about at length about things like flipped classrooms and, and flipping the flip, I think you've got as far as, haven't you, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> um, but from that, that perspective about 
well, how do you take all that digital content that's being shared by a teacher in the classroom and make it easily accessible to a child when they leave the classroom? So we create these digital journals where teachers can push out, you know, here are the, the websites you need to visit, here are the keywords you need to include within your, your written text, um, here are the notes you've taken, here are the screens and the slides that I've shown on the screen. And the child can take that away as a journal, do work on it, come back, the next lesson the teacher creates automatically another chapter if little bill is off sick there's a record of what was discussed mm -hmm. and of course if somebody knocks on the door and says I'm, I'm looking to assess what's happening in your class you've got some great evidence of what's been structured as well as potentially starting to build some lesson plans for next year that can yeah. be shared so we've kind of worked very much on that and the other side of it was um was how to support learners in different ways in the classroom and, you know um, when I was at school, you put your hand up to ask for help, but we also recognise that some learners, confidence-wise, don't want to ask for help and show to their yeah, peers. Yeah, yeah. So using the software to um, provide them with a silent way to say, I need assistance, yeah. and that can either be a message or it can simply be changing a toolbar on their screen to be a different colour. So when the teachers walk around the classroom, they can see that can see them, little yeah. Billy's changed the colour, so that gives them a reason to, to get involved with them. So lots of the tools we brought in, as well as the kind of the traditional broadcasting your screens and monitoring what they're doing are all about adding this kind of engagement and assessment in the classroom you know and it sits complementary to the the first topic we talked about in terms of the broader IT management because if you're investing in a tool to help reduce costs and as a byproduct you get classroom management included again for both your Windows your Mac your iPads and Chromebooks for example um, then it's an extra win that allows schools to deploy that technology in a perception of almost for free because it came with the other solution mm -hmm. but it also then allows teachers to say well now I've got this framework to monitor and, and collaborate I can now put on top of that layer all the new apps and tools that I want to use in the classroom and I've got a way of recording and controlling that and control might be something as simple as saying look you know Minecraft's a really creative space um, but not during the day I want that used for after school clubs for example so on PCs that have got well, apps you know have got um, Minecraft installed I can simply set a switch that says that's disabled between 8 a.m. and 3.15, mm -hmm. but it's accessible after 3.15. So we can stop you know, casual wandering on the PCs to explore what else is available and control specifically what apps and resources are there for that, that particular lesson. That granular control is really important. Uh, I want to jump back to something you were talking about a second ago, though, because you're talking about all these extra features for assessments and, and you've got questioning and you've got sort of classes fingers first and, and, and so forth and so on, opportunities for peer assessment, all of this. Now, as someone who, who shares regularly lots of different uh, websites to have lots, so you know, of the sort of four or five things you talked about, I can think of four or five different tools. Yep. Now, I, I do know that you are, um, you know, your, your products are very, very popular. Can you just give you a, just a quick sort of figure of how many sort of customers you've got? We currently sell into just over 90 countries and we have 17 and a half million users so with that sort of scale you know i'm thinking crikey how many of these teachers who've got access to this stuff in their classroom how many of them are going off to x y and z websites to try and have access to these different things yep when they can actually have it and be using it within their actual organization it's, it's, it's great to have all this stuff in it's one a, place and it's about saving time you know if a teacher can start the lesson and say right we want to visit this website resource i'm going to click a button on my console and it will push that url to each of the kids and open it on their screens mm. you've suddenly saved that 30 seconds while you're waiting for everyone to follow you through and when you finish a website being able to close it remotely and then launch an application so they're yeah. ready to start taking notes those simple things don't perhaps highlight on a brochure they don't sell on it in, in isolation but actually teachers consistently say that you now that the difference between a good and an outstanding lesson can often be just about maintaining the pace and interaction and just losing those Absolutely. small slots of time you know and that's part of as net support you know being a developer that works with education rather than as i see on occasions developers telling educators what they need and i think if you recognize that it's the nuances it's the subtle bits it's the don't make it too complicated, which means teachers won't pick up and engage with it. Mm. But equally, it's got to be consistent. You don't want to walk out of a classroom with a Windows PCs into MacBooks and have to learn a new app. If you can use the same technology, it becomes second nature and it becomes seamless across across a school or a district, for example. Absolutely. Keeping that pace in the classroom is really, really important. And, you know, 
time that teachers get to cover content, make sure it's covered, make sure that that, that learning is sticky and stays with them. You know, I, I've lost, and I, I know lots of teachers have lost so many minutes. You try and ask a bunch of, of primary school students, for example, to go to a specific URL by typing yeah. it in. You can lose 10 minutes just from that because of the levels of literacy. Even if you're using QR codes, you know, learners still need to get off, off their seats, walk towards the front of the classroom, yeah. or you're spending more money on printing these things out and sticking them down. And that's another strand because, you know, we can do things like blocking print queues so you don't get duplicates. You know, kid prints doesn't come out instantly, they print again, they print again and think of the paper cost. So yeah. we can print those, avoid those duplicates. And those are all kind of little strands that I think are really important, even down to um, we have teachers, particularly in secondary, saying there's a lot of time lost within the IT space by kids who need their passwords reset yeah. to get onto their computers. And so we have a feature that allows a teacher to actually do a password reset because it's talking to our centralised software. So it empowers them to quickly be able to do that, whereas traditionally it's, you know, speak to IT, you haven't logged out somewhere else, there's another issue. Um, and so lots of these things are about these subtle, let's say 20 seconds here, 15 seconds there, build it together and suddenly we might be giving a teacher an extra two or three minutes each lesson. And that has an impact over time. Absolutely. I mean, that, that goes back to the thinking of Brailsford and his marginal gains, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. You know, so one, one thing by itself isn't going to change the world, but you start making tweaks here, tweak there, tweak there, tweak there. The cumulative effect of having all those different tweaks added together can save you lots of time. Absolutely. And, that, and that's, you know, as we discussed earlier, we've been, as a business, we've been around since 1989 and we started off with a DOS product. So um, we've had plenty of time to optimise and we've had plenty of time to, with teachers to see the hair pulling and the, the frustrations that, that build together. So that's very much about the evolution of the product. Net Support Radio for the latest in technology and education news. So a good friend of ours is uh, Henry Platten, and, and uh, he is involved with a company, eCadets, and, and got a product called GoBubble. Uh, and that, that whole thing is around the whole idea of, of uh, making sure that um, students are safe online. But there's lots of things that you do around safeguarding yourself as a company, aren't there? Yeah, quite complimentary to Henry, who's, um, I think the technical term is top banana, and lovely chap. Um, we start off with the, if you like, the proactive side of empowering schools to have intelligence about what kids are doing. Um, so built into the product, and again, thinking of this idea of one product to provide this breadth of support. Um, you've got this agent running on your PC that's doing it for your managing your inventory and licensing and elsewhere. Why not also be there and, and doing other things that are supported? So from a safeguarding perspective, we start by looking and filtering on keywords and phrases that children might be typing. Um, but rather than thinking about it purely in just the sense of keywords, we also take it in the context of applications. So, you know, we can all come up with examples where a child typing something into a PowerPoint is less at risk than if they're doing it into Google or Facebook. Mm -hmm. So looking at the context of what they're doing it. Uh, we have a database both of, of many thousand English phrases, but we also have EAL packs. So if you've got new students that have arrived that are from Romania or Poland and so on, we've got phrases that are typical that might express risk or bullying for them. And in terms of categories of phrases and topics, you know, we monitor everything from um, our prevent duty obligations in terms of radicalisation online um, to things like um, body image, self-harm, suicide, right the way across to um, perhaps inappropriate adult content, which might lead towards uh, you know, concerns about online grooming. So we use, um, as well as that, we have the keyword list that comes from the Internet Watch Foundation that we've been members of for a number of years. And we also have the URL list from CEOP that blocks many, many thousand sites. That's an encrypted list because that's not something that can be shared, but in background, we're preventing somebody going there. So if you've got lots of children in your school, typing and searching for all different terms. It might be that you've got a group of, we'll use an example, you know, year eight girls that are um, searching for some body image terms. And as part of that, there might be things like, you know, telltale signs can be things about searching for cheap laxatives, ways to be sick, other topics. Then we build all those phrases together and, and we, we prioritize. So you can have all your phrases set as low, for want of a better word, and, and it will build a word cloud for you. So for any year group or for the whole school, you can look over a time period and see trending terms and topics. So you'll say, oh, year eight girls is this, year nine boys, seems to be some bullying terms going on there mm. or whatever. Um, and then for more serious terms, like self-harm or um, suicidal ones, we can set higher priorities that immediately alert your DSL or other nominated staff. Um, and for terms where you want a bit more 
more background, we can capture a screenshot so you can see what website they were on. Mm -hmm. um, or we can capture a video, so, and the video is constantly rolling as a capture. So when the keyword's triggered, you get the previous 15 seconds of what they're doing, plus the post. And if there are a number of triggers in succession, you'd get a longer video. But that allows then the engagement with a form tutor, with parents, if it's of appropriate concern, to really kind of put that background together. Mm -hmm. And alongside that, it's about blocking websites and inappropriate content. So that's that kind of proactive bit of being that kind of monitoring and background and empowering the SLT and the DSL specifically to have this intelligence about what's happening that then allows them to go and do what, what they're good at and, and their specialism. The second part, which probably aligns much more with, with Henry and eCadets, is you know this concept that we want young people to be digital citizens. The more at an early age they're, they're taught about the risks and how to use the online resources safely, um, the better. Mm -hmm. um, so our technology allows children to report concerns, again to nominated staff, silently. And if we think about a topic like FGM, you know, there's an obligation in secondary schools to have that information available to children, whether it's the back of a toilet door or elsewhere mm -hmm. where they can see it without their peers being around. Mm -hmm. So we do the same concept. You know, we provide a, a desktop icon or a system tray icon or an app icon on, on tablets that when you click on that, it says you can either report a concern to a trusted member of staff, pick the member of staff, report the concern. If you want to, you can attach an image. So if you're being bullied on Facebook, you can attach the evidence as part yeah. of that concern. Or you can access a list of appropriate resources in the UK. So, for example, that would be a list of, you know, child line, rape crisis line, bullying line, drugs line, and so on. Mm -hmm. And there's loads and loads of resources included in there, alongside FGM and other topics, that allows old, older children to access resources externally. And of course, a school can optimise and, and customise that to add in resources they want as well. So that kind of dovetails really nicely with with what Henry's doing from e cadets, yeah, particularly in primary, about empowering with resources the children to take the lead in the school and I think that peer-to-peer -peer lead is really really important and then of course the broader topic that Henry and Tool is providing now Go Bubble is that kind of safe social media for children uh, and I think it's a fantastic resource and it's been it's been very well well received yeah, um, absolutely, yes. so so yeah we sit nicely alongside that Check out the complete IT asset management classroom instruction and safeguarding solution from Net Support. So look, I mean, you've been managing it as a um, of net support for quite some time, but you've got a few other roles, and you know, this gives you a really unique perspective on how schools engage in, in not just with technology, but from recruitment to, to all sorts of things. And, and one of the most I, I was a school governor for um, four years myself, and I found it really, really interesting. One of the most interesting elements of it was was um, sort of spent, spent time working really closely with the school business manager hmm. uh, around how all of that was. Now you're a chair of governor for. Uh, uh, um, academy groups, that right? I'm a chair of a multi-academy trust, yeah. which has a, a number of schools, both secondary and, and, and primary feed, um, and in the broader picture, chair the governor leadership group in Cambridgeshire. And, and I suppose that links into, you know, you can't be in our industry for 25 years working on solutions for schools and not have a passion and a, a buy-in to, to what it's all about. So for me, you know, the, the, the flip side of the coin about providing technology for schools is, is providing, you know, personal input, support guidance and it's a two-way street working in schools you know you learn as much as you give every day and there's always different fresh challenges um, but the last few years have been an interesting few years in terms of education specifically with um, the, the push and the, and the move for many individual schools to move to to multi-academy trusts um, and i think as part of that the uh, the role particularly of trustees in that has moved much more where individuals with business experience can add more value alongside um, individuals with educational and pedagogical skills you know mm. so I think there's a, there's a lovely harmony there but the mat landscape also um, aligns quite nicely with the, the concept of um, you know the economies of scale schools working together more efficiently um, you know we, we covered the topic earlier about school budgets and the school funding formula is not exactly helping schools in terms of no. costs are increasing greater than the, um, the budget um, and I think many share the frustration when we always hear the message we're spending more than ever on schools and the answer is well, you would be. There's, there's a lot more children now, but per head, the actual available budget is reducing yeah. versus costs. Um, so, so never has there been a, a more appropriate time to really say, well, you know, how do we make those savings within mats? Where is the benefits? You know, and, and fundamentally, the order of the day is about kids getting the best outcomes. Uh, I personally don't hold all the weight simply down to the outcomes in sense of um, grades and achievements. Um, it's difficult when you're responsible for a trust to not be drawn to that. Um, but there's a bigger picture about educational experience. 
you know and I think that educational experience partly ties into having great technology that allows teachers to give them the, the broadest possible experience as part of their learning circle um, so typically in mats the economies of scale come from the back office side you know consolidated HR consolidated accounting and finance and often IT is a centralized service that allows schools to mon monitor and, and maintain all the IT estate centrally um, so that falls back into the camp of tools like remote management tools, inventory tools for the estate, consolidating those bits and pieces. Of course, there are savings for, for mats in the sense of if you've got lots of schools all using the same software, you've got bigger buying power when it comes to negotiating unit cost rates yeah, and other bits really, and pieces. Yeah. And sometimes that's about looking about consistent kit, but also maybe about sharing kit, you know. Uh, and it ties in quite nicely, I suppose, because um, when I talk about the broader educational experience, um, and this is the bit where I'm absolutely preaching to the converted, you know. When you talk about kids learning about Egypt or um, sticking on a headset and being there and exploring and mm -hmm. the, the environment, that there's so much where if we can save money on the operational side, we can leverage some of the you know, VR and AR tools I know you're very passionate about. Um, I think that's where we can actually add value in terms of both mats and also in terms of just being effective trustees and governors. I think too often governors have been there to um, ask what we're doing, but not always contribute in terms of ideas of what we could be doing. And yeah. it's that sense of being different, being bold, coming up with some fresh ideas. Yeah, so I, I offer, I mean, part of what I do, um, sort of supporting schools and whether, whether it's the consultancy or whether it's um, sort of inset and what have you yeah. um, there, there are lots of mats that I work with and because I'm working with a, a whole group of schools you know, bringing them all together uh, into one place is a way where I can help them and reduce their costs and then they'll, they'll get a better, sort of, a better deal out of me and there are so many things you can do and like you said you know um, yeah, yeah results are important you know but that's just part of the picture it's not the picture absolutely and so if they, there are ways in which you can sort of free up other areas of the budget you know so that you can focus on that all the things you want to try and focus on and that's just a great thing isn't it absolutely and i think you know the, the roles that we have within the education space dovetail quite nicely because um we're all about getting the most out of the technology and the kit you know and your role is about in a different sense from a, a user and a pedagogy point of view getting the most out of the kit and having to coming up with fresh ideas fresh tools and better ways to actually utilize the technology um, and i'm sure you must see that as a as a high area of demand yeah and it's, it's not about the, the 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 really big wow things it's, it's about those things that can have that impact like we were, we were talking about the sort of the marginal gains you can get from using uh, you know net, net support products and the savings of time and all, all, all of that it doesn't have to be the you know big whiz bang stuff that we do with with our teachers that can have the impact in the classroom. It's often about how you apply that technology to how you're thinking about your teaching and learning in the classroom that could then have that impact. Absolutely, yeah, that makes absolute sense. So you know it's a, it's an interesting marketplace, but we're we're very fortunate with the breadth of features and topics we just talked about that we're able to provide that kind of universal solution for schools and trusts. Check out the complete IT asset management, classroom instruction, and safeguarding solution from Net Support.